Hello everyone and welcome to our Matter 1.0 certification webinar. I would like to introduce our expert presenters Liam Giddings and Steve Hayes. Liam started with Track Global 12 years ago before they were rebranded to Element. He has progressed from a trainee telecommunications engineer to being responsible for the smart technology department. During this time, Liam has been heavily involved with Zigbee development and testing and also partnering with manufacturers to support their certification process with the Zigbee Alliance, which is now known as the Connectivity Standards Alliance. Liam now leads a team of IoT experts whose main goal is to keep up to date with the enhancements of the smart home and commercial world and to help manufacturers achieve compliance for multiple technologies with the Alliance. Steve has over 30 years of experience in the product approvals industry. He started his career as a test engineer and gradually worked up through various positions within a test organization, from running laboratories to taking full PL responsibilities for company business teams. Steve now takes a global role as the technical director for the Connected Technologies Business Unit at Element and is involved in helping to define strategy, identification of m and targets, as well as the technical and thought leadership needed to help Element stay at the forefront of testing highly complex and evolving products against regulatory industry and carrier specific global requirements. If you would like to ask a question during the webinar, Please select the questions pane in the toolbar to the right hand side of your screen. Enter your question in the text, then press enter. We will try to answer as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. And if you do have any connection troubles, please refresh your browser or re-enter the GoToWebinar platform. I hope you all enjoy the presentation. Over to you, Liam. Hi, thanks, Tremaine. During the webinar, we will be covering the following topics. What is matter? Going through the initial process for manufacturers, looking into the different paths manufacturers can use, the different device types currently certifiable under matter 1.0, the future of matter, how element can assist you with the certification process. Steve will explain the regulatory services which we can offer you with. And then finally, a live Q&A. So firstly, what is Matter? Matter is a new technology focused around having a universal communication protocol for smart home and commercial products. It is all about enabling devices to talk with each other using one single language. To make Matter work, the Matter developers knew they had to focus on four principles. Simpl simplicity, making it easy to enable products to connect. Reliability, having the confidence the system is reliable. Interoperability, for greater compatibility. Security, making sure the connections are secure, and that is exactly what they delivered. In collaboration with the Connected Standards Alliance, also known as the CSA, the standard for this technology was developed by leading smart home manufacturers. As you can see from a number of individuals and companies, this was a huge project. The CSA already had an established successful certification process with Zigbee technology. As such, it seemed a perfect partner to help steer the launch of this new technology, Matter. Element have been involved with Zigbee certification testing and have been an authorised test lab for the CSA for many years. We could see the potential for the future growth of smart home and commercial products with Matter from the very start. We used our knowledge of the Zigbee processes and got to work assisting where possible to help create a rigorous testing and certification programme. Matter had to be based on a common application layer and data model in order to be versatile with interoperability. When we look at the OSI 7 layers model, the network layer of, of a Matter product is based on a Wi-Fi thread or Ethernet protocol, and it also utilises Bluetooth low energy for commissioning. This layer allows devices to connect to each other. However, it is the application layer which provides unified Matter language. This is the layer which makes the devices functionally operate regardless of the underlying network protocol. As mentioned, Matter is all about bringing the different existing network te transport technologies together and using these bases to provide a wider ecosystem. 
Wi-Fi, thread, Ethernet and Bluetooth Low Energy are currently the network transports used in Matter. Although it should be noted that currently these network, trans these network technologies must be certified under the relevant governing organisations prior to Matter certification. That being Wi-Fi Alliance for Wi-Fi, the Thread Group for Thread, the Ethernet Alliance for Ethernet and Bluetooth SIG for Bluetooth Low Energy. Before Matter, I shared the frustrations of many consumers. Which ecosystem to choose? Will this product fully work with my current, e current system? It was clear a unified technology was needed for the future growth of smart home. When Matter was introduced, I could see that the developers had a vision, and that was creating a world whereby when we see the Matter certified logo on a product, the consumer then has the confidence it will integrate seamlessly into their Matter enabled ecosystem. Fast forward a couple of years, and here we are. The Matter 1.0 certification is now open. So how can manufacturers gain Matter certification on their products? Here, I will go through the initial certification process for manufacturers. Firstly, the manufacturer needs to become a member of the CSA and request a vendor ID. The product is then developed with a chosen network transport. This network transport has to be then certified. Once the network layer is certified, you can submit your product for the Matter application layer testing with Element. The aim then would be to perform one successful uninterrupted formal run of all applicable test cases on the product. Following this testing run, a test report is sent to the CSA and a declaration of conformity form needs to be filled in, signed by the manufacturer and Element, and including your submission to the CSA. Once the application, has been submitted, the CSA will review it and use the report to determine compliance. Once compliant, the CSA will issue a certificate to the manufacturer and the certified product will be added to the distributed compliance ledger compliance record. Following initial certification, there are a number of additional ways a product can be certified or recertified. These are product family certification or PFC, certification by similarity, CBS, or rapid recertification. I will expand on these certification paths in the next slides. So products family certification applies to manufacturers who want to certify variants of the same product, for example, variations of the mains plug the product uses. With this certification path, successful formal testing must be performed on a parent product, then you apply for certification, when you apply for certification, sorry. The other family products can be added without the need of any testing. Certification by similarity is a certification program which focuses on certifying a product which is similar to a previously certified product. That being, for example, the addition of an LED to monitor an operational function. If new features were added to the product, which affect the matter portion of the hardware or software, then the product would need to go through full retesting. The Rapid Reset program is a, is a trial program and it was introduced as there is an expectation that manufacturers may want to update their products frequently due to standard changes. As such, it, it is a, a way of is a, as such is it a way to efficiently increase quality in your product and gain recertification in your product quicker than having to go through several full runs at test runs at, at a test house. It is important to note, however, that this is, an, is not a self-certification programme and I will go through a typical process now. So the product is essentially is initially certified. The manufacturer makes changes to, to the certified products. The manufacturer then performs a full run of all the tests in-house using the matter test harness and documents the logs created for each test to verify the expected outcomes. The manufacturer then requests that element review the successful logs and verify it matches what is expected. If so, the manufacturer can then apply for rapid recertification with the CSA via their portal, and the CSA will review our report and your submission, then issue a certificate when approved. In order for the manufacturer to utilise this programme, they must first meet the CSA's training requirements. To meet these requirements, manufacturers must attend a CSA approved training session with element or at a CSA member meeting. Now, currently, the Matter 1.0 certification is only open to a finite number of device types. These are bridges, controllers, 
door locks, HVAC controls, lighting electrical, media devices, safety and security sensors, window coverings and shades, with the matter developers looking to add more device types in the near future. With this in mind, what does the future hold for matter? So matter development has not stopped. The different the, de the de development teams are looking to launch one or two releases per year, adding new device types and ongoing enhancements. Element are actively involved in the development of these releases and will be keeping up with all the latest updates. Matter 1.1 certification, or rather the spring release of matter, is due to open shortly. I also wanted to bring to your attention that this development is CSA member driven, and if there were aspects of the standards or test harness which could be improved, please get in involved and be a part of the IoT revolution. This includes assisting with adding new device types to the certification if you are developing a product which is not yet set uh, available. So how can Element assist you with the certification process? We are one of the few test labs validated to be able to offer the formal testing program for Matter. We have over a decade's worth of history working with the Connectivity Standards Alliance, starting when they were the, the Zigbee Alliance, and have partnered a, a large number of manufacturers from their research and development stage to gain in certification with Zigbee. Due to our involvement with the development of Matter, we can now offer the following services. Advisory services, this is help with documentation or submission to CSA, etc. Pre-certification testing, these are days where we can run a subset or all the test suite against the MATA test harness, and we can identify any issues prior to the formal testing run. MATA test harness training for manufacturers wishing to utilize the rapid reset program, rapid reset log review, and formal certification testing. This is the standard formal testing run which, with which we will, will produce a compliant report, which is sent to the CSA following success. I will now pass you over to Steve Hayes, who will take you through the regulatory services that we offer. Thanks, Liam, and uh, good afternoon, good morning uh, to you wherever you are in the world. Thanks for tuning in and listening to this webinar. Let's uh, go to the next slide, please. So what Element has described up to this point is all of the things that you as a designer and manufacturer need to do to enable you to get matter certification. But of course, Element and your product need more than just a single logo on your device. You need to comply with the regulatory requirements around the world to enable you to uh, legally place your product onto the market. So we as Element try and reflect that in the services that we offer to you and hold your hand right from the R&D phase through to the reality and having a product on the market that is fit for purpose, safe and compliant with all the different regulatory and industry requirements applicable to it. Our regulatory services uh, cover the globe. Uh, they cover specifically uh, North America, uh, FCC, I said in Canada. Uh, they cover CE marking uh, for the EU and UK CA marking for uh, the UK. Uh, and many of the other different legal regulatory requirements around the world that leverage these two models uh, to enable you to get your product to market. Those devices which are intended for uh, automotive applications, uh, then we have automotive approvals indicated in the e-marking that you see on the screen bottom left hand corner as well. So if you like the regulatory testing supports the legal framework, the industry testing are all of the different badges or logos which typically get affixed to the product. So uh, what Liam was just describing in terms of matter certification, but there are other types of industry marks that get put on uh, your product, uh, depending upon what the technology is and employed. Things like the IEC CB scheme for uh, the safety recognition uh, across the world. If you're employing cellular technologies in your product, then in the US with PTCRB and GCF for a global market of cellular uh, device approval as well. And then for 
manufacturers of products that are integrating matter with cellular technologies. Uh, we as Element have got uh, recognition um, as what called ATLs, authorized test labs. Um, for many of the operators, certainly in North America uh, and many other markets around the world, they cover manufacturers such as AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, uh, Dish, Vodafone, uh, and, and Domico, and, uh, uh, and many others uh, in addition to. In order to get those logos on, Liam, next slide please, um, they uh, require a number of different tests. So depending upon what regulatory testing is required or what other industry testing is required, they typically break down into the headings that you see on the right hand side of the screen. The most common are EMC and safety requirements, but clearly um, uh, matter is a type of wireless technology as well uh, and governed by many wireless and uh, regulatory uh, requirements throughout the world. Linked to all of that is the protocol testing that Liam was describing, the carry acceptance testing for the network operators to allow those devices on their network. Uh, but increasingly, and especially in an IoT world, um, more and more products being uh, uh, connected or using batteries within their device. Batteries uh, require a very specific type of safety assessment in, an, in in addition to the uh, general product safety requirements for many different markets around the world. Element has services typically uh, that will help you every step of the way get your product to market. So if there's anything that you've heard on today's webinar that is of attractive to you um, and related to matter, then we're pleased to uh, help and discuss that with you. And with that, I'll hand back to Tremaine, um, who will then uh, lead us into the next phase of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Liam and Steve, for such an informative presentation. We will now go through as many questions as we can before the end of our time slot. Hello, Liam and Steve. The first question that I have here is, can you conceive of a situation where a manufacturer was asked to recertify because of an update to the matter specification? Yeah, so good question. So this basically is is it's kind of a choice of the manufacturer. So they don't have to recertify. However, it's their choice if they want to be certified the latest uh, specific the latest standards really. Thank you, Liam. The next question that I have is: What are the kind of changes that require a matter recertification? Okay, so. Um, any real changes to the end product would require recertification. Um, so, for example, it would depend on the certification path you could go into. It was dependent on the changes made to the product. Um, so, if it was, you know, uh, basically changing of a of a, of a plug or a colour, for, for example, you could maybe go for the certification by laboratory route. Um, if there was changes to the matter portion of the product, it would likely need retesting. Um, so, so, so it would go through a, a normal retesting. Uh, certification route really. That's great. Thank you for answering that, Liam. The next question that I have is in case of an old TA update of the device, do old devices updated, are they already matter certified? Uh, so, uh, yeah, right. So when they're OTA upd updated to a, a, a previously um, um, uh, previous hardware so yes there would be if, if it was a, if it was a, a hardware basically an end, the end product is is certified so if the hardware matches exactly the same as it was during testing and it had the exact same firmware installed on the device that end product is what is certified that's great thank you for answering that liam the next question that i have is how can you explain what sort of content is included or expected in the logs for rapid certification? Okay, good question. Um, so we would we basically, we need to get to a point where we can see exactly what how, how you test it, what versions of test lines you, you, you've used, uh, and basically look at it, look at the outcomes of the of the test harness, and basically match that up with the expected outcomes. 
Um, so that is so we basically do a comparison of those and make sure it, it, it you know it, it it matches what the test specification states. That's great. Thank you for answering that. The next question that I have is what are your thoughts regarding hydrogen storage requirements and certification? Uh, I'm unsure on, on that on that question. I might I, I might need to come back to you on that one. Okay, no problem. Uh, the next question that I have here is how does your certification apply through Europe and the United States? I suppose it's a global certification um, of, of matter. Um, so it's the same certification process as it would be anywhere. I, I think okay. it's, it's important to, to separate the two things there as well. So as Liam says, matter is a global certification it's one logo one certification that covers uh the the product globally as opposed to regulatory uh compliance and so that's dependent on what region or what geography the product is actually going into so if for example you made a matter certified device that was only going on the european market then you'd only need c marking and ukca if, however, the product was going on the North American only market, then you'd need um, FCC, ICED, safety approval, it was uh, connected to the AC uh, uh, mains network. But then equally, if it's going for a global network, one matter logo and then multiple regulatory badges, depending upon uh, which the uh, or what the end market actually is. That's great. Thank you for answering that both. The next question that I have is regarding the approval for hardware using 802.15.4 in the 2.4 hertz gigaband, is there a test suite for approval measurements such as the Bluetooth SIG host control interface? Again, good question. Um, I might need to just come back on that one. Okay, no problem. The next question that I have is regarding a recording be, being available uh, of the webinar. We will be sending out a recorded version to all attendees and registrations via email. So please do uh, look out for that. The next question that I have is which devices are currently being developed and looking to be added in the next releases of matter yes a good question so in the near future you know the developers are looking at adding appliances uh, cameras electric vehicle charging energy management and robotic vacuums so that's in the next wave that's great thank you for answering that liam uh, the next question that i have is imagine a product that is HW matter compatible but is not FW matter compatible when it is first sold can it be matter certified after an OTA firmware update so again it this goes back to if the end product is is the same as what it would be when it was you know the submission for the certification um, so it's the end product that gets certification so it, you know it would be certified if it, if it was the exact same end product so I think that's in that right. particular case, the question was around, is the same hardware, but it's the firmware that's been updated over the air, right? So yeah. uh, just, just to confirm, so, um, so, so you said it's the end product, so the, the physical device hasn't changed. So that's the thing that's got the matter certification. So when there's a firmware update, what does the manufacturer need to do then? Okay, so yeah, so it's a, it's a hardware version and a firmware version that, that is included in the end product. Um, so that's that's what the certification. Great, and then, and then actually, and that also relates to regulatory approval because most of the regulatory approval is the combination of hardware and software. So if there's any of the software that has an effect on the radio characteristics, um then you need to to reassess the products that may require some additional testing 
or it may just require an analysis as to what the effects of the software are on the radio characteristics themselves or even its EMC uh, performance. Um, so it sounds like there's sounds like a similarity there between the matter certification and logic certification. That's great. Thank you both for answering that question. The next question that I have is, will the matter certification provide a path to demonstrate compliance with Article 3.3 cybersecurity in the Red Directive? Uh, good question again. I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to double check that one. Well, okay. So let, let's break it down. So um, I guess the first thing to note is the um, the specification for matter. That the the design of the matter protocol is very much with security in mind. The question is, can it be hacked into? So. Um, I don't know, Liam, if you could answer that bit of it. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that the inherent design is such that it is robust, but that doesn't negate or, or that doesn't eliminate somebody trying to wantonly hack into the system. So there might need to be some cyber assessment done on top of Zigbee or uh, uh, matter certification. When it comes to Article 3.3 of the Red. Um, the, the, the delegated act, if you like, or the article has been published and, and, and will be invoked in 2024. The detailed specifications of what you've got to uh, meet are still being prepared. So Sen Senelec is still in the specification drafting stage um, and, and therefore as an interim or before the published uh, standards exist, then you'd need to go to a notified body to get that bit approved or, or certified. Um, the, the question is, uh, I mean, if you just step back from this, I mean, but both of these objectives are to try and make the device cyber secure. Um, and therefore, if you're doing it such that it can't be hacked into for matter, then one would assume that it's secure and therefore you would meet the provisions of the legal framework in this particular case, the RED, or what would be also in addition in, in the future, the Cyber Resilience Act. Um, the difficulty in answering the question is that it's, it's all in its infancy at the moment, um, but the principles are if it's cyber secure for matter, then it's likely to fulfil Article 3.3. The only issue would be if Matter 1.1 or Matter 2.0 came along and introduced additional cyber requirements, then clearly the two things are going to be out of step. So one might not lead to the other at that point. So hopefully that answers the question to a limited extent. But as I say, it, 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 it's a tricky one to answer because the, the legal framework, whilst it's written, um, the corresponding level of detail needed to demonstrate our, uh, compliance to Article 3.3 isn't necessarily there just yet. That's great. Thank you, Bob, for answering that question. The next question that I have is, does garage door control access land in any of the current device type that can be certified? If not, will it be in the short future? Yeah, so currently it's not listed um, as a device type, but um, it may be it may be included in the future. Um, it's, it's not included in the near future, but the, you know, they're working on adding a lot more device types than, than currently I've listed today. So, um, it, but again, if you are interested in adding this type of device um, to the certification, you know, you, 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 know you, you can get involved in development and help make that happen. I think it comes back to your point earlier on, Liam, as well, about, um, you know, matter is, is the ecosystem of the house. Um, so, so clearly carriage doors um, are part of that ecosystem. Um, the priorities are driven by the members of the CSA uh, itself in terms of what their priorities are. And I can only assume that um, garage door openers weren't necessarily well represented in CSA, which is why it hasn't made its way to, to, to matter 1.0. Um, but, but going back to your point that if, you know, whoever 
ask that question is, you know, if that's their product line and they're interested in it, I can imagine the alliance themselves would be all too keen to add that uh, to the ecosystem it's what itself, a matter certification. But it just needs, if you like, somebody to, to sponsor it, you know, to say, I'm a manufacturer of garage doors, my garage doors operate in the same matter ecosystem and we want that certification to cover it. And I think then, um, you know, you, you'd be leaning against an open door in terms of what matter would cover in, in the future. That's great. Thank you both for answering that question. The next question that I have is, so just to fully understand the certification by similarity, it was stated an extra LED. Uh, they would envisage that this expanded further than this explanation. Do we have any further examples that we have approved that are a bigger change than an LED and maybe appeared the same, but had a few additional connection ports, etc. Yeah, so it's, it's basically um, kind of simple changes um, to the portion of the device which doesn't really affect the matter portion, if that makes sense. Um, so it's, it's you know it's uh, trying to think of an example, um, you know maybe a change of the plug and uh, that's similar to product family, but you know it's something that can be changed that can be certified by similarity. Um, or in, you know just different um, colour or something um, of the product or you know, the casing, it, you know it's all included in the certification by similarity process. Um, so there's a couple of examples. That's great. Thank you for answering that question, Liam. The next question that I have is: all the standards have a baseline, but then manufacturers add their own specific non all standard features to sp support specific functions of their kit is this the same for matter so could you just repeat that again no problem uh, the question was that other standards have a baseline but then manufacturers add their own specific non all standard features to support specific functions of their kit is this the same for matter as well so uh, I should, it's, it's, similarly, Zigbee has something similar where you're talking about manufacturer specific operations. Um, I would need to have a look um, at the, how Matter do define those um, because we simply just haven't come across that yet. Um, so I will get back to you on that. Uh, my apologies. It was non, uh, not non all standard features. It was just a typo uh, in the question. But thank you for answering that. Just checking through to see if there is any more questions uh, that can be answered. Yep, seems like all of the questions that have been put through we have answered uh, so far. I don't know if there's any closing words uh, from yourself, uh, Liam or Steve, that you'd like to add, or if there's anything in the presentation that you may have missed that you'd like to let people uh, know about. Yes, obviously we're, we're here to help. So if there is any uh, questions or uh, that need answering, which I haven't maybe answered today, you know, more than welcome to, to, to get in touch and I will do my best to answer those or, or get the information that is required. I think, I mean, just on that point, I, I think um, there were a couple of questions that uh, were sort of just, just left a little bit open for us to go and have a look at there. So, um, Tremaine, I'm assuming that um, the uh, content of the uh, webinar, this presentation, will be circulated to everybody that attended after the event. Um, and then what we'll probably do is follow that up with an email to, to address those specific questions, you know, so we write out the question and then the answer uh, for everybody to see. That's great. Thank you so much for your time, the both of you. And also, thank you very much to our attendees and registrations as well. Uh, I had a terrific time on this webinar and I hope you all did too. Uh, as was mentioned by Steve and Liam, if we did not get to your questions, 
uh, please feel free to reach out to us directly or if there was not answered enough in detail or if there's something you'd like to explain again. A recorded version of this webinar will be available on the Element Testing YouTube channel, which we will send the link to you via email. Also, we have a short four question survey that will appear on your screens. Please could you take the time to complete this as we would love to read your feedback. Once again, thank you very much for attending and we hope to see and hear from you soon.